Hey all, no traditional intro for this one, not like this deck really deserves it anyway. Just a heads up that tomorrow I'll be hosting the second Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine series right here from the sterile environment of my bedroom on twitch.tv slash mbtyugioh. It'll start at 11.30 Eastern Standard Time tomorrow, Saturday, April 4th, and I'd really appreciate if you'd stop by and partake in a shared anxiety that can only be achieved by watching people try to navigate animation combos on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro. Anyway, here's the video. Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. Yesterday, we played an uninteractive, miserable deck that represents a lot of the worst Yu-Gi-Oh has to offer. Today, we're going to do the exact same, except this time, the deck is terrible. Nonetheless, it's time for us to take a look at an exceptionally silly strategy enabled by a recent Unlimit, presenting Inferno Tempest Necroface. So here's the list, and I hope you appreciate the lengths that I go to to put these together. Usually it's just a matter of netdecking lithium, but if you type Inferno Tempest Necroface into the YouTube search bar, the top result is a 600 view video from 2016 by some jerkoff named Mono Blue Tron. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is a one-stop shop for deck building, deck uploading, card searching, and strategy articles, some of which are written by yours truly. I'm proud to represent them, and I encourage any player interested in deck building to check out their website at www.ygoprodeck.com. Now, back to Necroface. Inferno Tempest to Necroface is a deck for people who take a look at Gren Maju and think, hmm, that's just a little too interactive. The glue that holds this deck together is Inferno Tempest, a quick play spell that can be activated when you take 3,000 or more points of damage. It banishes all monsters from both players' graveyards and decks, leaving you with naught but what is on the board. What's more, by jamming three Necroface into your list, you can always banish an additional 15 cards from both players' decks after the effect is resolved, usually, but not always, decking your opponent. This has gotten much easier with Necroface's April Unlimiting, as now drawing one of these horrifying Nightmare Amalgams isn't an immediate game too. With the decks lost in premium set up cards like Grinder Golem, it's gained in Kaijus and easily accessible Link 1 monsters with zero attack. Unfortunately, while you'd think banishing every single monster from your opponent's deck would be the end of the game, it often isn't. Your opponent's only got to be playing 15 spells and traps in order to net an extra turn, and notably they'll be afforded their current setup plus whatever cards are in their hand, which is often a death sentence for a deck that's just spent all its resources resolving a card last played in the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie. We're aiming to equalize the board state, or at least inspire a rage quit, with a sizable Mystic Mine package. If that doesn't work, we can always attempt to actually win the game with Gren Maju to Iza, who also functions as a fantastic chump blocker post-mine. Finally, before you all tear into me for my card choices, understand this deck is not Gren Maju. Maju staples like Gizmek, Orochi, and Pot of Desires do not have a home in this archetype. They both cut us off from our linear game plan by banishing Necrofaces face down, and make it less likely we'll win a deck out war. Remember, we are aiming to resolve Inferno Tempest first and foremost, and playing cards antithetical to that game plan just means we're playing Gren Maju, but worse. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, we're on three Lava Golem and three Doggeran as our level 8 Kaijus, three Necroface, three Gren Maju, and three Eater of Millions for free Amina setups. For spells, we're on three Extravagance, trust me on this one, I know we're playing other draw spells, three Trade In, and one Upstart. We're also playing three copies of Dark Spirit's Mastery, which searches Lava Golem, and a Mine Package of three Demise, one Terraforming, and three Mine itself. Finally, we've got three Left Arm Offering, three Inferno Tempest, one Metaverse, and one DD Dynamite if things get really, really irrevocably hairy. In the extra, we have an extravagance board, but honestly, we're never going to go into any of this except for Almirage for Gren Maju and Amina for Eater of Millions. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against a Neos Kluger deck. We are never getting this card in the TCG, are we? This game is meant to showcase how poorly our deck goes first. Our opponent on a blind second strategy has opted to give us the play, and while we have most of the things we need, we don't have a way to access Inferno Tempest. Well, we'll have to hope that Mystic Mind gets us out of this. We're going to set a copy of Demise of the Land and pass it back to our unsuspecting opponent. They're going to lead with a copy of Orphus Scorpio for a Darling Tony and Cobra, which they'll activate the effect of, followed by a Demise of the Land for us for a Mystic Mind. They're going to add a copy of Neo's Fusion to hand and pass it back to us, and what do you know? We have mastered Inferno Tempest by drawing it off the top. We're going to special summon a copy of Eater of Millions and crash our anima into this copy of Doggeran. In damage step, we will activate Inferno Tempest and banish every single card from their deck. As we activate three effects of Necroface in sequence, they will concede. I tended not to make a habit of showcasing the worst case scenario first, but I wanted to give Neos Kluger a second in the spotlight before I moved to more competent decks. Adamasia Gem Knight is next, and let's see how far off this deck can pop. They're going to lead with an unexpected die for a Lapis before normal summoning Rescue Rabbit and going into two copies of Sapphire. Next, they're going to activate Adamasia Researcher and find off the top. 
Nope, nothing, apparently. Okay, next he'll link someone a copy of Link Spider. Go off, King. I have no fear of what you're going to do. Okay, wait, I have maybe exactly one fear, and it starts and ends with Gem Knight Lady Lapis Lazuli. We're going to activate Block Dragon's effect, and then Special Summon a Gigantes, and Special Summon an Adamasia Seeker, and... Wow, these Adamasia hits. Oh my gosh, I am getting extremely lucky here. Afterwards, I'm going to link Summon a copy of Raptite, and... Okay, well, we can't win them all. They're going to get a Crystal Rose to their side of the field, and then they'll activate the effect of Crystal Rose to send a copy of Lazuli, putting the Lapis back in hand. They'll link Summon a Needle Fiber, getting an O-Lion. Afterwards, they're going to Gem Knight Fusion for a copy of Lapis Lazuli. There she is, and I'm hoping I'm not getting FTK'd here. We're going to take 3,000 points of damage, and that's time in the round. Next, they're going to... Oh, thank God, they're just board building. Uh, it's Borlode Savage Dragon. It will negate anything that it so chooses, which, of course, will just eat a Lava Golem. They're going to go into... What is happening here? A Gem Knight Fusion for... a. Oh, Zirconia into Phantom Quartz, Phantom Quartz effect into Aquamarine, that's pretty cool with Mascarena on their side of the field. Anyway, let's tribute everything relevant. Next, we'll special summon a copy of Eater of Millions, go into an Anima, and go to Battle Phase. In Damage Step, we'll activate Inferno Tempest, and they have nothing with which to negate. We will banish their entire deck. We'll activate three copies of Necroface in the Banished Zone. They'll be able to negate one with this copy of Opelousa, but that's nowhere near enough. Afterwards, we'll, I don't know, activate Mystic Mind just for BM, and pass it back to our opponent, who will lose by failure to draw. So, it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's on Dragon Link, and why do they have a Soul Shave Force in hand? Is why Strix a part of this deck now? Oh god. They're gonna lead with a copy of Seyfert, which they will use to get a copy of Black Dragon Collapse Serpent. They'll special summon that, and then Link summon a Striker Dragon, triggering both the effect of the Black Dragon and Graveyard and the Striker on their side of the field. They'll then special summon a copy of White Dragon Wyver Buster and go into Romulus, getting a copy of Dragon Ravine to hand, which they will activate to send a copy of Absurator Dragon to the Graveyard. They're going to get a Rocket Recharger, and then special summon it with the effect of Boot Sector Launch, then quick launch into a Tracer, so they can summon both an LP and a Striker Dragon. They'll LP into a copy of of, ooh, wow, silver before summoning Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon by its own effect and recharging back this copy of Tracer so they can make a Quad Boral. They'll Pisty back this copy of Red Eyes Darkness Metal Arata Wen before going into Heavenly Spheres and Force Strix. Where are we going with this? They'll special a Singing Lanius to go into Wise Strix and use Wise Strix's effect for Zephyros the Elite. They'll Soul Shave into a CDI and no, this is an ending on. Simorg, Bird of Kings, no! Barrier Statue of the Stormwinds is going to lock me out of Lava Golem, and I have no idea what I'm going to do with this hand. We'll normal summon a Gren Maju and set a copy of Metaverse, but it's gotta resolve if we want any chance here. They'll CDI our monster, we'll Metaverse in response, and they'll CDI in response, effectively ending the game. Yeah, we're taking way over lethal damage. So it's... Time for game two. I guess I apologize for not being prepared for the barrier statue of the Stormwinds set up in Dragon Link. We can't go first, so we're going to let our opponent and just hope they don't end on it. They're going to go from Seyfert into Striker Dragon. Afterwards, they're going to Special Summon a copy of Black Dragon Collapse Serpent into Heavenly Spheres, triggering the effect of Black Dragon to get a White Dragon Wyver Buster. They'll Quick Launch a Recharger from Deck, and then Special an Abs Router. They'll go from LP and a Striker, and then LP's effect to... Get Black Metal, okay, sure. That gets a copy of Red Eyes to hand, which they will summon by its own effect, before Link summoning a Romulus and triggering the effect of Abstrider Dragon as well. Afterwards, they're going to activate Red Eyes Darkness Metal, and then Link summon a Triple Burst to use Striker Dragon to get this copy of Recharger back, and then bring back the Recharger, activating Ravine, in order to send a Dragon to their graveyard in the process. They'll go into Quad, and then Zephyros the Elite back the Ravine before activating Boot Sector Launch for the Tracer in hand, and making Force Strix. Shoot! Okay, looks like we are going to have to contend with it. They're going to go from Y Strix into Bora the Spear. Afterwards, going to activate the effect of Quad Boral to go into a second Force Strix. That should be enough to trigger Y Strix and get them a CDI. Ugh, God. Okay, afterwards they're going to be able to go into Stormwind, so we aren't going to be able to summon Lava Golem and... Wait a minute. What's the defense on that Force Strix again? We're going to go ahead and attack it with our Zero Attack Grand Maju. We'll activate Inferno Tempest and they don't negate it? Why wouldn't they negate... Oh my god, they're going to negate the Necrofaces. They're negating the last Necroface, so they'll still have cards in deck and they'll be able to OTK me! That's so heads up! Anyway, here's Mystic Mine. Alright, we'll pass it back to our opponent to clearly does not have an out to this card and their two card extra deck i suppose i'll just go to battle phase and win that way so it's time for that all important game three and uh oh we are going first it would appear i'm not too happy about it but as long as we can find exactly demise of the land or metaverse we should be fine we're going to leave with a copy of dark spirits mastery to get a copy of lava golem so we can trade it in we're going to activate upstart and yes yes we not only found Metaverse, we also found Inferno Tempest. We might be able to do this. Our opponent's going to activate Upstar Goblin, normal summon a copy of Seyfert, and we will flip the Metaverse! Enjoy, Mystic Mine! Now, we have all the time in the world to find our remaining combo pieces. We draw a copy of DD Dynamite. Really regretting that inclusion right now. 
Afterwards, our opponent's going to pass back to us. We draw for turn. It's a Lava Golem. We're getting there. We're going to pass it back to our opponent. They are not summoning another monster. God, the patience. But they've seen Lava Golem, so it makes sense. We're going to pass it back to them. For turn, they draw a copy of Seyford. I'm still feeling pretty good. I mean, I've basically got an infinite amount of time to find the things necessary to win the game. It's not like... Uh-oh. All right, well, suddenly this game has become a lot closer. They're going to activate Romulus's effect and Black Dragon Collapse Serpents to get a copy of White Dragon Wyvern Buster. Afterwards, they'll activate Quick Launch for a Silver Rocket Dragon. Next, they'll make LP and Striker Dragon, triggering LP's effect for a Black Metal Dragon for Pisty. Oh, they're going to get this copy of Red Eyes to hand and then use Striker Dragon to get this copy of Silver Rocket back in hand, which they will recharge the recharge for. They'll metal for an Anesta Rocket before going into Quad Boral and metal again off of Pisty. Triple Burst Dragon, four Strix. I know where this is going. They're going to Special Singing, activate Dragon Ravine's effect, and I think the next step is likely going to be, yes, a Tracer and a Boral Sword Dragon. That's savage as follow-up. At least their attacks are high. We might be able to cheese through one of our Inferno Tempests. They have to negate this. We'll activate Inferno Tempest and they'll negate it with the effect of Triple Burst Dragon. All right, we're clearly getting outskilled at every point in this game. Let's wrap this up. So we're back with the deck and... Huh. While we did pick up a fair amount of games, I'll break with my Yugi Tuber brethren. I don't think this deck is anything to worry about. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, it's not consistent per se, but it's pretty good at affording you the time necessary to get to your combo pieces. Mystic Mine is a hell of a card, and if your opponent has burned through their spell negation dealing with Jeff's domain, they won't have it for Inferno Tempest. Two, it's actually pretty well positioned against the current metagame. As Dual Overload is explored, it's clear board building is the name of the game, and the deck with nine kaijus is an easy sell from that position. And three, Damn, it's cool. Damn, it is so cool. And the cons. One, it has literally no ability to go first. I know I claim that a lot, but it's worse than normal Grenmaju, even. Your only turn one play is Demise of the Land, and if that fails, then your only hope is your opponent summons a monster with 3,000 attack, but can't make lethal. Two, it's extremely one-note. In games two and three, expect your opponent to not fall for a single trick to save their negation perfectly, and basically to make you regret showing up with anything from the 2004 exclusive pack. And three, the combo, uh, regrettably does not win the game. <laughs> Very often I'd load into a match just to see 60 cards and realize there was about an 80% chance I'd lost on the spot. All in all, while it makes for fun replays, this deck is not going to be competitive in any serious capacity. I doubt Konami would ever let something this uninteractive and degenerate have it stay in the sun, unless that something was called Deep Sea Hand Loop, of course. So that's that. Thanks to my patrons, MeepMoto27, Tyler Slacks, Mika Reichman, Crispy, Sir Tachyon, Lucas Hansen, Schnappi, Lavender Lemonade, Gusto Secon, Siberian Rabbit, Michael Oskvark, Dan the Manhoven, Bleh, Blake Root, Standards Objective, Jeff Leonard, Emperor Stove, TJ Steakhouse, Pro Yugi Dad, Picnic Blasted, Burrito Man 93, Fighting Fang Wong, Donnie Fillerup, Adam Sundquist, Isaac Jackson, Second, Lucas Geardis, Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Distrin, and others. If you like my videos, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.